Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I want to talk about how to filter lists in Python. I got this question very often quite recently. Uh, a lot of people who have followed our Python tutorials had this question directed to us via email, via Twitter, etc. And we said we have to make an article on that uh, with a accompanying video. As you guys know, there is always a written piece of information to our videos. So you can go to cosec.com or click in the link in the video description to pull up this article and when you are inside of this article we also always provide a REPL to our article so you can just click on this fork REPL button and directly live code with us without setting anything up and try it out yourself. So I highly recommend you pulling that article up and following along with the tutorial because this is the best way to learn. All right let's jump right in. All right, I just went ahead and created a brand new folder inside of my WSL2 instance running on Windows 11. If you want to know how to set that up so the terminal looks like this, you can find a whole WSL2 tutorial series both on our YouTube channel as well as on the website. So I'm creating a new file here and I just call that uh, filter underscore python.py or whatever. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, as I said, we provided the file in Repelit, so you can just open that up in your browser and you don't need to do any of this. Then I just uh, type out code dot, which opens VS Code for me. And this is my development workflow. That's how I always like to develop stuff on Windows using WSL2. All right, then I'm opening up the filter Python Py file and we're just gonna look at a few examples. So Edda, there are three ways on how to filter lists in Python. The first way which, which we will look at first is a simple for loop. So we iterate over the list and we apply some logic to filter out those items. The other way is list comprehensions. We can use list comprehensions in Python to filter list items. And another way of filtering list items are lambda functions. But we will go all over all of these in this tutorial. So let's just jump in. So I'm trying to, to stick to the exact same syntax as is present in the article so that you can actually follow along even if the article open. Um, so I'm going to look at my other screen here. So let's first define a new list and uh, we say that's user age and it has a couple of age values in it. So we say whatever 12, 4, uh, 14, 21, 9, 18, 31 and 7. Uh, that's a bunch of ages to work with. And now let's say we want to filter out only the people who are above 18 years old. So how would we do that with a, a filter function or by creating a filter function? So we can do that simply by initiating an empty list here. So we say over 18 and we equal that to an empty Python list. Okay, so we have that set up and then we go and write a simple for loop. So for item in user age or we can say for user in user age however you want if the item is bigger than or equal to 18 then we want to say over 18 and then we can use the append function it's actually dot append and then item so that tells basically uh, the loop or tells python that every item that is over the value of 18 should be automatically appended to the over 18 list here. And then if you go ahead and we just print it out, we say print over 18 and we do Python 3, uh, how do we call it? Filter Python pi. Then we see that we get all the values printed out that actually are equal to 18, which is 18, or are above 18. So this is the first way of doing it. This is an easy and clear way. You can read it very well. Um, next, let's look at list comprehensions. So list comprehensions are basically a shorthand version of what we have just written here. And you can learn more about list um, comprehensions when you go to our website and you can read up on there and there will be a video out shortly too. Now with list comprehensions, we can put all of this code in a single line and make it much, much shorter. Now this is the way a beginner would usually do it. Probably somebody more experienced would use a list comprehension just for the sake of saving some code space and for the sake of readability because list comprehensions are really easy to read and understand in the Python programming language. So uh, let's just comment that out here uh, for the while being and uh, let's just go down here. Now we also comment out this over 18 uh, list here that we initiated because we do it in a different way now. 
So we leave the, uh, the list with the ages in place. We use the same list so we can check if we actually get the same result. Now to do a list comprehension, we can just simply initiate the, the empty list again and we equal that to our list comprehension. And to do that, we simply write a one line of for loop inside of this list comprehension. So we can say h for h in, and then we pass in our uh, list. And I'm always tempted to say array because I'm coming from JavaScript and I'm bouncing around between JavaScript and Python all the time. So I'm always trying to don't say array, say list. Um, user h, if the h, this is our expression then, is bigger or equal to 18, all right? So this basically does the same thing uh, like in the other one. So we initiate a list called over 18 and set it equal to our list comprehension logic. Then inside the list comprehension, we create a for loop and an if statement that iterates over each item in the user age list and checks if its value is higher or equal to 18. And then if the uh, value is actually higher, it will append it automatically uh, to the over 18 list, to the new list that we create. Now actually let's run this and see if it works. So we get the exact same results. Now the uh, list comprehension syntax, if you're interested in that, is simply we put that down here. List comprehension syntax, so you can remember that for later, is simply uh, we do new list, for example, and then it's expression for item in iterable if condition. Uh, this can be a bit confusing if you're a complete beginner. I, I agree on that. Um, but once you wrap your head around it, it's basically a simple for loop inside of some braces here. So it's not all that hard to understand. I think you can wrap your head around that uh, pretty, pretty quickly. All right, the third way of doing the same thing is by using the built-in Python filter function. And I think I didn't talk about this in the introduction. I think I left it out by accident. But it's, so it's actually four ways. It's the filter function that we can use. It's a for loop, it's a list comprehension. And it's also a lambda function, which kind of requires us to also use the filter function, which you will see in a second. So it's a little bit, it's between three and four, however you want to put it. Um, so for the part for the filter function, let's do it like this. Let's comment that out as well. So this is our list comprehension. Uh, maybe we, we do that like this for loop that we can check that out later again, a list comp comprehension and now let's give it some space here to use our filter function. Now to use the filter function um, we need to write it a little bit different. So we first need to actually write a function for us that checks the age. So we need to have some logic to pass into the filter function because how the filter function works is, uh, let's drop that in here, filter function and the, the syntax for that would be a filter. So we call the function and then we need to put in a function we call. So we need to call a function that we want to call on the iterable. So to do that, we do check uh, ages, then we put age in as an argument into this function. And then we say we want to return the value if the age is bigger than or equal to 18. And then we initiate the over 18 uh, list again, but this time we assign to it, we, it's not actually a list yet, we need to still use the list function to convert it in a list later on because the filter function returns an object. And uh, we don't need an object, we need a list. So we need to do basically two conversions here. So we do filter and then we pass in the check ages function we just have created, as well as the user age is it user age or ages? It's user age, uh, the user age list that we have created initially. Okay. And once we have that done, we cannot just print it out because if we print it out now, it will probably return an error on object. Yeah, it does an object. So it gives us the memory index, whatever that is of the, the object. And that's what we don't need. Uh, what we actually need is we need a this converted to a list. So what we can do here is simply wrap that into a list uh, function, and then we wrap the over eighteen uh, variable into the list function, which will then convert it to a list. I know it gets a little bit, little bit 
complicated here. But if we then run the code, it actually in fact returns the same exact values that we have seen in the other two examples so far. Okay, now that we have already seen uh, three examples here, let's finally tackle the fourth one, which are or is lambda functions. Now to do that, uh, we can actually leave the print statement here. We have the filter function in here. I just want to make sure you guys still see the user age without deleting everything there. So I think we copy that down for now. Um, okay, let's comment all of this out. We know that this is our filter function here. And then we say uh, lambda function and we just drop that user age list in here and then we work from there. So what is a lambda function? A lambda function in Python is basically an anonymous function and this anonymous function uh, automatically returns a value. So you don't need to tell the function to return something like we did here in this check ages function. It returns the value by default. Now why would we use that? I don't know in this case, to be honest, I wouldn't use it in this case at all. It doesn't make any sense for me to use it in this case. I'm sure there are some use cases out there which I'm not aware of where you would use a lambda function, um, where you just need to use something once or use a function once and then you can forget about it. So I'm pretty sure there are some use cases out there. Let me know in the comments below uh, which use cases you know for lambda functions, but let's continue on with that. So we need to again have another over 18 um, list here, or actually it's a variable again, that we create. And on this variable, once again, we need to call the filter method here. And inside of this filter method, instead of passing in the uh, check ages function that we have created earlier, we don't create a function this time, at least not per se. Um, we pass in this lambda function. And how we do that is we just write lambda. Then we do h colon h and now comes the condition which is bigger than or equal to 18 that's what we already know then we put a comma in there and then we put in user age which is our list of ages and i left this print statement here because once again if we run this the filter that we have set here will return a object once again which we don't want we want a list so we have to leave this list conversion in here now if we run that we see that it is the exact same outcome as in the other two. Now this is great. So basically we create the variable called over 18 and assign the filter method to it, the built-in filter method. And in there we create this lambda function that checks the user's age. And the way it works is basically very simple. I'll just copy that over for you here. So the lambda function syntax is as follows. It's lambda arguments colon expression. Again, I'm not sure if I would use that in that case, probably not, but do know that some people use it. Um, yeah, that's simply how it is. Now, before we wrap this thing up, let's quickly talk about performance because I know this question will come up now. In terms of performance, which one is the best? The simple for loop, the uh, list comprehension or the filter function or anonymous lambda function inside of the filter function. Now, when it comes to that, uh, you have to say it depends. The difference in performance is so marginal and small between all of these that in most cases it probably won't matter. But if you want to really break it down, you actually would have to use something like a generator function, which I won't cover in this video, but it's written in the article. You can read that if you want to, which is a little bit of more of advanced Python. Um, but basically, if we have the choice between, and I just copy and paste that from the article, if we have the choice between a simple uh, list comprehension and using a lambda function, so we have those two things here, that's exactly the same price list and exactly different <laughs> functions here. So in, in the first case here, we use the list comprehension that we have learned about over here. And in the second one, we use a anonymous Lambda function. Now, if you compare those two functions, just like give it a little thought, which one is easier for you to read? And don't think about it now. And now I know that I can read it. I just heard about how, do, how it works and how to create one. Yes, but what about if you run a little bit of a larger program or you work on a program, you uh, leave it on the side for a while and you come back later, even it's your own program or, or if you work with somebody else, Readability for me is always the number one priority if it comes to my own code as well as if I'm working with, together with somebody else, which mostly never happens. 
<laughs> but uh, just in case, um, I just think that this is more has more value than half a millisecond of performance in an application where most of the time it doesn't matter anyway. So just be aware that um, in general, we can say that list comprehensions are a little bit faster than the filter method. And probably somebody of you will disagree, but this is what my research has shown. But if you really want to drill it down and you really want to have the best performing thing, you need to write a, a generator function, which apparently is the best when it comes to performance. All right, guys, before we wrap this video up, let's quickly recap what we have learned in today's video and article. Now we have learned that we can iterate or we can filter list items using a simple for loop. And in most cases, to be honest, that's perfectly fine and enough. Use the one that you are most comfortable with. The second one that we learned about is list comprehension with the list comprehension syntax here, which basically brings all of this into a one liner and reduces the code quite a bit. As you can see, if you compare this list comprehension one liner uh, with the uh, syntax for the for loop that we have created here, actually that needs to get moved in here. Sorry for that. And uh, I think this is well, it's a no brainer. And once you get used to this list comprehension syntax, it gets really, really easy too. Now, the next one we've learned about is using the built in filter function without Lambda. So we created a function that checks the age of the user and returns the result in here. Then we initiated the over 18 variable and we filtered that we passed the filter method in there and we passed in our created check ages function as well as the user age uh, list as a argument. The next and last thing we learned about are the anonymous Lambda functions with the Lambda syntax. And we initiated here a uh, empty again variable, then we filtered or we added the filter, the, the filter function in there and we put the anonymous Lambda function in there and as well as the user age list once again. And very important for the last two ones, just remember, we need to wrap that output inside of a list. So we need to convert it to a list. Otherwise it will return an object, which is what the filter function does per, per default. Um, yeah, I think that's it guys for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope those little Python bits are helpful for you. And I'm in the process of creating a whole curriculum where we have a step one, step two, step three process, which is exactly what we have here. It's the combination of videos and articles and everything in the articles and in the videos will be the same. There will always be a Repl.it repository. Uh, if you guys like that approach, please let me know in the comments if there is any suggestions for improvement. I'm happy to hear them. Maybe something can be made easier. Maybe Repl.it is not the best choice. Let me know and I'll try to see what I can do to improve that. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope to see you back in the next one. Until then.